G'day guys. Over the last few lessons, we've started to learn about mountains as a global environment. And I'm here at a place called Martin's Lookout, just near Springwood in the lower Blue Mountains west of Sydney. And I thought that this would be a great place for you to see some of those geomorphic forces in action. So a geomorphic force is anything which changes the shape of the land. You can think of it that way. So in class, we've looked at the three main forces which build mountains, uh, particularly faulting, folding and volcanic activity. Now, unfortunately, from where I'm standing at the moment, uh, you won't be able to see volcanic activity. And gosh, if I do see volcanic activity, I'm going to get out of here pretty quickly. Uh, but what we can see certainly is faulting, uh, which is one of the processes which builds mountains. Uh, and we'll see some of the forces, and I'll show you those a bit lower down, which result in actually wearing the mountains down and actually making the mountains smaller, if you like. And I'm going to show you this by actually abseiling down into uh, the canyon that you can see behind me. Uh, behind me, uh, just over my shoulder, what you can actually see is Glenbrook, Glenbrook Creek and Western Creek and where they meet. So I'll go down and get some of my gear set up and I'll see you down there in just a moment. Okay, so I'm all hooked up now. I have my ropes all set up and I have my abseiling harness on. And in just a moment, I'll be going backwards over that cliff. And this is about the point that you really start to hope that the tree that I've attached my ropes to has deep and strong roots and a really good firm grip uh, on the ground around it and the cliff behind me. Uh, and once I get down onto the, onto the cliff itself, I'll tie off for a few minutes and we'll have a chat there because from there we should be able to see some really interesting uh, geomorphic forces, uh, particularly things like erosion, um, which has formed this enormous valley behind me. And we'll have a bit more of a chat once we get there. But I better switch this off because I really do need both hands while I go down. Uh, otherwise, the next, the next bit of footage will be me splattered on the rocks below. Alright, so I'll switch this off and I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so now I'm hanging off my ropes. and Now I really hope that that tree has a really good firm grip on the ground. Now, I've brought you down here so that we can have a look at some of the geomorphic processes in action. As I said in class, uh, several hundred million years ago, these mountains were actually part of the sea floor. And in a series of cataclysmic events, which were probably linked with the explosion of some of the volcanoes, such as at Bent's Basin and Mount Tomar, uh, these mountains were actually forced up out of the sea floor. Now, the rock around me, I'm going to turn the camera so that you can see, and I hope you can still hear. Now, the rock around me is sandstone. And in between it, in various points, there's something called flowstone as well. Now, sandstone is a sedimentary rock, which means that it's actually laid down underwater. Now, in other places around the Blue Mountains, you can actually find fossilised seashells, fossilised fish, seagrass, and all that sort of thing. But what we're looking at here are some of those different layers or strata. And you can see down here near my feet, some of those different strata. Now, the next question becomes, well, how did these valleys, such as the one behind me, occur? Well, this is another geomorphic force, but this one isn't a mountain building force as such. It's actually a force which wears mountains away. So, I'm going to pause just for a moment and see if you can think what it might be. Okay, that should be long enough. Now, if you guessed it right, I'm hoping you did, the answer is erosion. Now, way down below me, down in that valley that you can see, as I mentioned before, is something called Glenbrook Creek. Now, Glenbrook Creek isn't a mighty, great, big, rushing river. But the thing is, to wear away a valley, even one this size, it didn't need to be. We're talking about the, the erosive effect of water over a couple of hundred million years. And what this has done is to very, very slowly wear away this soft sandstone that I'm standing on, or resting against, and wear out this enormous valley below. Now, if you can see, and I'll turn my body around a little bit so you can see a bit better, what we're looking at down here are sharp V-shaped valleys, complete with cliffs. You're also looking at my nose, and I hope you're enjoying that. But what we're looking at down here a sharp V-shaped valleys with cliffs. The Blue Mountains valleys are classic uh, erosion caused valleys. Uh, sorry, I have an ant. The classic erosion, erosion valleys. 
uh, where the water over several hundred million years has simply worn away the soft rock. Now, one of the cool things that you can see is the evidence of what was actually going on under the sea floor here in what's now the Blue Mountains several hundred million years ago. So I'll turn the camera slightly again so you can see, and hopefully I have it pointed in the right direction. You can see a few places where harder edges of stone peek out from in amongst the sandstone. Now what we're looking at there for the most part is something called flowstone. So whereas for the most part, well sandstone, as you'd imagine is sand, flowstone was a much finer mud. And the effect of that is that it actually wears away much slower. Now I'll upside down just a little bit further and I'll see what else I can show you. Okay, so I've actually come down a fair way now, give you a wave, and I'm just hanging about here on my rope. Now, what I brought you down to this point to show was another way in which erosion occurs naturally. Now, what I've said so far is that water causes erosion, but in fact there's another force as well which has a great impact, there I am, has a great impact on sculpting out the shape of these cliffs. Now, I'll show you up under here, because I think it's probably the best example, if I can just swing myself around. Now, if you can see up in there in that hole, there are lots of little holes bored up on the underside of the cliffs. What we're looking at here is the effect of wind on erosion. As I said, sandstone's actually pretty soft. It's pretty soft material in lots of places. You can actually break it away with your bare hands. I'm hoping that doesn't happen up above me where I'm roped in. Uh, but it's very soft stone. So what's been happening here over hundreds of millions of years is the effect of that strong wind coming up from the valley, if I can just turn myself around again as I'm hanging here, the effect of the wind coming up through that valley behind me, roaring up here and beating up against these cliffs. And what that's done, very very simply, is to sculpt out the shapes from the soft sandstone. Now over there in the distance, I don't know if you can see it, you can see some smoke. Now that's the ongoing Blue Mountains bushfires at Lynxview Road that you guys will have been hearing so much about and some of you may have even had experience of. Now I'm going to get myself back up the rope uh, and I'll see you back up the top. Okay. Now I thought just before I start back up the rope, uh, you guys might be interested in how on earth I'm going to get back up there. Because just to give you an idea, if I can turn the camera, that's where I've got to go. Alright, and looking along the cliffs either side of me, there just aren't any obvious and easy routes back up to the top. So I'm going to have to use a process which is called prussicking. Now if you hadn't seen prussicking before, it's using these much smaller ropes. And this one down here, that my foot is through you can see that, to climb back up the rope. Now it's really hard work and it's a hot afternoon here in this beautiful spring sunshine and so I'm going to be a bit hot and sweaty when I go up the top. So I'm going to get going and start my way back up the ropes and I'll see you when I get there. <laughs> 